All right, so we are back with the Dodge Hornet. We had the Dodge Hornet last year. This is the 2024 in a much better spec in terms of color and stuff. If you uh, check the link in the description, I'll put the link to last year's video where we had more of a base model Dodge Hornet GT. This is more of a fully loaded Dodge Hornet GT, which comes with some pros and cons that we're gonna talk about now, one of the pros is the styling. The last one we had was black, and I don't think the triple black look of that one really did it a lot of favors because the overall shape of the Dodge Hornet is kind of boring. However, this one is red with the black top package, and it looks way better, in my opinion, because you've got the little fake hood vents. That's a thing. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> That's a thing. All right, and the black mirrors, the black uh, wheels and tires, like, well, black, black tires. So you've got me saying I know, I was going to say, look at you making me fun of me. messing and... up, like, the tires. Um, so the black trim looks really good on this thing. And around back, I work uh, at a Hang place Hang on, that, now i got to swing all the way back here. Uh, I know, yeah, you're, okay. you're, you're a, little, okay. a little slow well, on I'm the movement a here. I'm yeah. not a cameraman. All right, now, oh, see you there. The cameraman has done a uh, 180. Um, in the back here, it, it's kind of boring looking, but I did notice because I work at a shop now where a lot of Porsches come to get service, and this has a distinct resemblance to the Porsche Macan, as a few Were people they trying noticed. For that? I wouldn't say so. It's kind of like the Porsche Macan you got off of Wish, but like it, <laughs> it definitely has a little bit of a vibe to the Porsche Macan there. So in this red and black spec, I don't think the Dodge Hornet looks bad. Um, it's got cool looking running lights. Like it, it's an okay looking small crossover but the problem with the dodge hornet comes a little later when we get to the inside so let's talk about some of the positive stuff first in terms of the powertrain and the driving dynamics so we are here with the 2024 dodge hornet something something gt gt and it's what is this a small small crossover small crossover um it's not really my favorite i'm just gonna go ahead and say that just because small crossovers are not really what i like i like a big car truck or a big giant SUV. So keep that in mind as you are watching the rest of this review. Well, so, but what do you think of this? Well, I'm letting, let, give me a second. I'm getting oh, okay. there. I'm getting well, there. We're in the styling so, portion here. I don't think it looks bad. I don't dislike this car. I don't dislike the way it looks. I think the front end is kind of fun. The red's a lot better. We had a black one last yeah, year. Yeah. I like the red. I like the red. I like all the black accents. I think the red with the black, I think the tires look pretty good. The wheels. The wheels look pretty good. One of these days. I mean, what if I think the tires look good too? Okay. Yeah. Got some stylish um, tires. I like the Hornets. I yeah, think you that's liked it last fun. time too. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a kind of a fun little thing. Um, the end is kind of, the back end's like a little bubbly or something weird. Yeah, I don't know how to describe boring. the back end. It's a different shape, but it doesn't bother me. It's kind of dirty. Um, well, we've had it for more than a week. I know. I like the, I mean, I like the red and black. I, I, I don't dislike the way this car looks. So looks wise, I think it's fine for this kind of, class of vehicle i think it's trying to be a little sportier than because you keep comparing it to like a honda crv or something yeah or like our rav4 or like a rav4 but i think it looks cooler i don't think those are very cool looking cars so i think it looks better than those cars probably okay um all right I think it's kind of cool looking all right go dodge kind of sporty looking um the the this is where it lacks right in comparison to the honda crv or the rav4 yes you said this is what seven 27, which is like 10 less than those. Uh, uh, at least 10 less. It's more so, than 10. I mean, time. you can see like he has one large backpack in here yeah. and there's not a whole lot of extra space. Um, and because it's, it's like not open, like, right? Like this thing. We could take that out. Oh, you can take it out. Yeah, okay. Just a little can you lower the seat? Thing. Yeah. Okay. So you could get yourself, I mean, but then you can't fit people. So nope. I guess that is whether you want stuff or people, there's not really a lot of both. No. And that probably is one of my biggest complaints with this car is that I feel like it does lack space wise this in is like a lot Mazda of areas. CX5, CX30 size. Yeah, it's pretty tiny. It's pretty tiny. So if you're looking for a car with a lot of space, this is probably not it. Um, but if you're like, you know, single guy or gal commutes around, doesn't need a lot of space, like just wants a cute little sporty something. Then maybe this is just a cute little sporty, a something. cute little sporty something for the, maybe this is for what the you're man for. who wants a cute little sporty yeah, yeah. something. I said the man or the gal, the guy <laughs> or the gal, yeah, who wants a cute little sporty something, but not like someone who wants to carry a whole family. Like we did ride all four of us in this car. It was tight though. It was tight. It was not. I would not prefer to do it again. Not ideal. If, if the option. And were. we have a Rav4. And we have a Rav4, and we have all four ridden in that. And this is way which more. is not my favorite, but has much more space than this does. So. 
there's that. All right, so powering the Dodge Hornet is a two liter turbo four cylinder. It's making 268 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. Now, in this class of vehicle, that's pretty good numbers, honestly, okay? So if you get the GT trim, you get this engine right here. Now, if you get the RT trim plug-in hybrid version, those numbers go up significantly into the high 200s and I think mid 300s. If I remember, I'll put them on screen because I can't remember what they are since we don't have the RT here. This is the GT. Now it's running through a nine speed automatic transmission and it's hitting the ground via all wheel drive. So in terms of the power plant, this is actually pretty healthy in this class. You're not gonna get this kind of speed and pep out of something like, well, our RAV4, we have a base model RAV4 that is you know, apocalyptically slow compared to this, and the CRV is less powerful. Now, one significant competitor to this vehicle is the Mazda CX-30 and the Mazda CX-5, because if you get the uprated turbo engine in those running on premium, they make 320 pound-feet of torque running through a six-speed automatic transmission. And as I'll talk about in a second, the strength of this thing is the way that it drives, but it's not top dog in the class. So even though I'm about to give it some level of praise, there are others that are still doing it as good or better. Here's Welcome the to the middle of the video. We're glad you've hung in this long. Um, we are driving the 2024, is that right? I don't even yes. know. Um, Dodge Hornet. Correct. Is what it's called. Any other, any funny letters or names or anything? GT. Oh, Dodge Hornet GT. What does the GT mean? Fancy? Uh, it's the lower trim. Oh, lower trim. Yeah. So not opposite of fancy. No, RT is fancy. Um, And uh, the way this car drives is fine. It's very fine. Um, it's kind of how I feel a lot about, feel about a lot of this car is that it's fine. Like it drives fine. It's got good pickup. The braking is a little tight, a little grabby to tight, me. Grabby. Grabby. Is that the right word? Uh, it's firm. Firm, which is not my favorite, but it doesn't, it's not like jerky. Like I can, I've gotten used to it the more I've driven it. So the braking and the dry, and the gas, the acceleration you love gas are fine. Are you going to go? Um, it just feels right with, with gassing, braking and gassing. Accelerating. I know, but I just find it's not right. Gassing makes me sound like we have issues. Well, you do. Um, but that's a story for another time. Um, Not one they want to hear. No, that's absolutely true. So it's very, um, the suspension in the ride is fine. It's a little firm, little. It's going for that. Yeah, like a, like a sporty, like it's trying to be a sporty sports car. Is that what it's going for? Uh, kind of, yeah. Like I can feel, the, I feel like I can feel the bumps in the roads. It's definitely not a floaty suspension at all. Um, comfort wise, while I'm driving, it's pretty comfortable. The seat is not the most comfortable. It's not like a cushy seat that you feel cushioned in a nice cocoon of cushion. Cush, cushy, cush, cush. Uh-huh, it's not like that. These um, are the sports. It's firmer. Seats. Okay, I can tell the sports seat. So, which is not my cup of tea, but you probably didn't mind it. Uh, right? I don't mind the stylus seat. I just don't understand it on this car. Oh, okay. Because it's like not really a sports car. Right. But like we're trying to be sporty. Yeah. Um, I do feel like it looks like when I'm inside it, I feel like I look like I'm trying to be in a sports car, but I'm not. It does have a sporty interior. Yeah. Um, but like driving wise, it's perfectly fine. I don't have any complaints. Did you have complaints? I guess we'll no, talk about that. But yeah, I'll talk about it in a second. Yeah. But I the, thought it was fine. The ride handling is one of the better aspects of it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no complaints about that. Um, I mean, this car in general is not my cup of tea, but. Well, yeah, but we'll talk more about that. I'm not the, I'm not the target audience. Well, you kind of are. I am? <laughs> like, who do you think the target audience of a small crossover is? Not me. You? I'm not Someone sure. Someone younger than you? Eh, I'm not sure they know who the target audience okay. is. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't think it's me because I don't think any of me or any of my friends would be riding, driving this. Why? Um, from a driving Well, side. it's, I mean, from a drive. see, that's the thing. At least for me, I don't buy a car because, oh, I love the way it drives. That's like how it looks. That's why this part of the video is always where I have the least bit of information because this is what I care about the least. Oh. I don't want jerky brakes. I don't want grabby brakes. Right. Um, but beyond that, I eh, don't really care all that much. Okay. So I so. think, I think most, and I hate to say like women, but like people who are not car enthusiasts they want right. a car that's like a comfortable drive but it's not like 
Like if I like the way a car looks over another car and I like the interior of that car better than this other car and this car drives a little bit better, I'm picking the one that looks better. Interesting. So. All right. That's my thought. That's my opinion. Maybe Dodge. I could be wrong something. and maybe people disagree, but. Well, let us know if you disagree. Yeah. But I think if you're a car enthusiast, obviously. I'm talking non-car enthusiasts. Well then, yeah. let's get to my part for the car enthusiast. Sounds good. So this is probably the best part of the Dodge Hornet, which is the driving experience. Um, I actually kind of like it. It feels sporty. It feels fun. It feels energetic. Um, I don't think the ride handling balance is quite as sophisticated as something you get from a Mazda, most notably the Mazda CX-5, which if you were looking, comparing a price, the CX-5 would be kind of like the main competitor, right? Um, the CX-30 is even smaller than this, but it's also more affordable. The CX-5 and the CX-50, to be honest with you, would both be kind of at the same price point. And I think the ride handling on those is a little bit better. Um, but where this feels fun is the sort of growl of the engine, the 295 pound feet oh. of torque. Um, yeah, but that handled that pretty good. Yeah, I, mean, I, that, I just wasn't ready. Yeah, that bridge expansion. And the steering also is decent. There's not a ton of feel, but it's relatively fast off center. Um, which is kind of entertaining in a vehicle like this. You don't normally, you know, have that kind of responsiveness in a small crossover. So I would encourage you, if you are slightly interested in this vehicle, you definitely want to take it for a drive because th this is where it's going to kind of shine a little bit is in, in the driving. Um, and, and the ride is fun without being harsh. Um, I know that you would rather have a cushier yeah, ride. Yeah, but it doesn't bother me though. No, but it, it doesn't bother. Now I do think it needs a little more roll stiffness. I do feel a little bit of rocking from side to side, which in something that is this stiffly sprung and this sporty, that's a little bit of a bummer. Um, you don't get that in something like the Mazda. So there is a little bit of side to side motion, kind of a little bit of rockiness. Um, but overall, it's an entertaining car to drive. The transmission is relatively responsive. Um, you don't get a lot of gear hunting. The, the steering, like I said, is quick and entertaining. So I really want to have a little bit of praise, I guess you would say, for the Dodge Hornet because I feel like it's very easy. I think a lot of reviews of the Dodge Hornet kind of skew negative, and I don't think they credit the Dodge Hornet enough necessarily in the way that it drives. It does drive like a little bit more of an upmarket vehicle because I think it has that Alfa Romeo underpinning. So there is a little bit of that, you know, zestiness to the driving experience that you're not going to necessarily get out of a Honda CRV or a Toyota RAV4. Um, and, and so that's, does that make up for some of the price difference? I'm not so sure. Also, the driving position is relatively good. Um, I'll give it a little, a little gas here and you kind of see like, that's that's responsive like that's fun like that's way more responsive than you get i would argue the transmission is more responsive than the mazda's old six speed the mazda's dealing with that ancient six speed i think this nine speed is a little more responsive um so the dodge hornet is not without certain charms let's put it that way this is not going to be an suv for everyone but dodge is trying to make a dodge like suv now, we said this, or I, I'm pretty sure I said this, we said this last time we had the Dodge Hornet, and it still holds true. But the bigger value sort of gain is getting this drivetrain and this fun driving experience in the $30,000 range. Yeah. That low to mid $30,000 range. At 44 plus, this starts to get into entry level Audi, Mercedes, BMW and then it's kind of a non-starter. Hello again, I just realized I forgot to mention something in the powertrain section and I remembered it in the driving section. The fuel economy in this, it's rated low 20s, I think um, highway 29 miles per gallon. I My commute is pretty tough now and it's all stop and go traffic and this thing was like rocking 22 to 23 miles per gallon, not great in this class of vehicle okay and i just wanted to throw that in i know i just sort of was like let's throw in some positive stuff but people buy crossover suvs to do family hauling duty they drive you know to the store and run their errands in them 
and, and you have to factor in fuel economy. If you don't want to factor in fuel economy, you're buying like a Mustang GT and you don't care. But if you're buying any type of like family crossover style SUV, the fuel economy has to matter some, like at least a little bit. And in stop and go traffic, it kills this thing's fuel economy. It goes down the tubes and you've got way too many hybrid and plug-in hybrid offerings in this class of vehicle, not to mention it. Now, let's end on a positive note. The Dodge Hornet does come in a P-Hev, but that P-Hev is sort of a little bit, starts more upmarket than this one. So there is a solution within the Dodge Hornet lineup, but you're going to spend some money on it. And that's a little bit of a bummer too. Okay, we're in the interior and the interior, I don't hate, I don't love, I'm kind of indifferent to it. It looks a little sporty, like we're trying to go for like a sporty moment. The wheel, I don't, I feel, yeah, it's a little too small for me. I like a bigger, fatter wheel. It's not very fat. Um, I don't like this metal, metal thing or whatever. I also, there's a lot, because you said this is, this is the low end trim or this has. No, it's, it's the lower, it starts at the lower end. Okay. I don't, there's a lot of this plastic that looks really bad, I think. Um, the leather, like, or whatever, this is not, is this leather? It's not even leather. Leather. Pleather. Um, that looks pretty good to me with the red stitching. I think that looks nice. I just think we could do with more of this and less of this. Yeah, the materials are okay. Yeah. Um, I like the little silver accents on the thing. It's got a handle that's a handle. It's got cup the holders there. The style is pretty good. Yeah, the style is not bad. Yeah, and I get, like, I feel like what they're going, like, this definitely looks sportier to me than a Honda CRV or whatever. So if you want something that looks sportier, this is definitely doing that, and I think doing it pretty well. Um, the screen is too small for me, and the way they did the buttons and stuff. You'll, you're, are you going to talk more about this? Yeah, I'll talk about. Yeah, that I think it looks too small. I don't love it. Um, the I do like the phone charger, but it's one of those where you have to go up and under, yeah. and I don't like that. Like, just give me a thing where I can lay my phone down and not have to go up and under. I don't like that at all. Um, I like that it's just a normal gear shift. It is easy. It's got the like manual plus minus whatever this is. Yeah. But like it went into that a lot when I did one of two. Yeah, the gear shift is a little. It's like too loose or something. Yeah, it's a little unrefined. Like I would put it in reverse and it would or into drive and it would go over into yeah, that when that I did too. want it to be. Um, this is a little tight. It does fit the stand, but like you have to fit it back this way. So then the handle goes into this space. I don't like it. Like it doesn't really fit this way. See. Um, and I know it's just a stand, but like a lot of people have big waters these days. Yeah. So I think Water that's something to think about. Popular. Also, what I don't like is that the air conditioning is not my favorite. When you are stopped, like at a red light, it gets very hot. Well, when the engine when auto the engine cuts off. the engine auto off. So I guess if you turn that off, it would be fine. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. So I would definitely turn the engine on auto on. So there's off, a big difference off. when the engine is off. A big difference. Like it's hot. It's hot, hot. Um, it's got a nice sunroof. It's got a teeny tiny little thing here. Um, but I think that kind of goes with the theme of this car is that there's not much space. So this is teeny tiny. The wheel is small. The cup holders are small. The seats, I even feel like are a little small. Is They're that me? supposed to be sporty. I don't, well, then I don't love it. I want a bigger, cushier, more comfortable seat. The seat isn't, it's not uncomfortable, but it's not cushy like in the least. Um, the screen is small. You said that. Everything's small. I was just reiterating <laughs> all the small things. Yeah. What about the back seat? Yeah. Um, it's small. I've been back there. Let's go look. All right. So I'm in the back seat. It's small. Um, now, the I mean, like, of the, the theme of the review. Can oh. I fit back here? Technically. Clearly. But it's just not very comfortable. And the seat is just very, like, it's kind of hard. Um, you know, some of the back seats we get in, and I'm like, ooh, that's a cushy back seat. That is not how this one feels. You like a good back seat. I do like a good cushy back surprising. seat. Surprising. Well, at least if it's going to be small, at least be like cushy and this guy is not. Um, and I don't love the leather on the seats. No. Oh. It's it's not, it doesn't feel nice. It's kind of cheap feeling. Probably is. Um, but this like fake suede or whatever. Fuede. <laughs> Fuede. Get it? Faux suede. It's Fuede. in Fuedo. Um, it is not bad. But like this just feels cheap to me. This... It feels like plastic trying to be leather. Oh, okay. Well, that's so, because sometimes they trick me. Sometimes I'm like, "Ooh, this leather," and you're like, "It's pleather," but it feels like leather. Not. Did you say how tall you are? Five nine. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of plastic in here. This plastic, I just don't love. I don't love the material. This, what is this? Not fake suede. <laughs> no, there's a lot of things I don't like material-wise back here, and it's not super comfortable. And, um, it does have a couple of 
teeny tiny cup holders. What about that? So they're down here. They're okay. not great. Okay. Um, so there are some, <laughs> but they're small. And when the car cuts off on automatic start, stop, whatever, at a red light, it's very hot. I was literally down here saying like this, like, <laughs> like trying to uh, trying to get the air to well, like. You said it's bad in the front, but it's worse in the back. Oh, well, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So. Obviously. Obviously. There's just some lacking. The interior space is probably my least favorite thing. Ouch. Yeah, sorry. Now, here's where things get a little hit and miss in the interior. Now, hit you, well, hit or miss, <laughs> hit and miss, because there are some hits and some misses wow. in here. Now, you sort of talked about the style and the materials, and I agree with everything that you said about those things, because it, it has these elements that feel pretty good. I actually kind of like the wheel. I know you said you, you didn't like it as much. I do like the wheel because it is kind of small and sporty, um, but there are some hard plastics and stuff. And in this car that costs over $44,000, it's actually closer to the $45,000 uh, side of things. Um, that's a little disappointing. Now, this thing does have pretty much every available option. It's got all the tech package, preferred package. It also has the track package, which gets you these seats. Now, I appreciate a good bolstered seat as much as the next driving enthusiast, but as I may have already mentioned, the driving portion, because we haven't filmed that yet, movie magic, um, I don't really understand the point. I don't really understand the point of seats like this. They're good, they're supportive, and they hold you in place. They're comfortable enough, and it has decent lumbar, but like track package in a small crossover? Like, why? Why not just have comfy seats. Um, now, tech-wise, you get the memory. This has the Harman Kardon audio, which is pretty good. The infotainment is solid, but as you mentioned, and I've complained about as well, the icons in Apple CarPlay and stuff are too small because it's trying to have the home buttons on screen while Apple CarPlay is on screen, which I do appreciate, but the screen is like 10 or 11 inches, so it makes it difficult to see. Also, in the gauge cluster, and I'll put some uh, some pictures up of this while I'm talking about it, it had a service reminder in the gauge cluster that like I couldn't get it to like go service away. Service within 850 miles. Yeah, and it, it's like Which way, yeah, annoying. way conservative. It's, it's like, oh, by the way, in a thousand miles, you're yeah. gonna need service. Oh, thanks for reminding me, Dodge Hornet. Um, and so it was always in the gauge cluster. Like I changed the gauge cluster. I, I went through all the settings and stuff, and it would not go away. That's like super annoying. Okay, like I, I, I get it. It needs service. Why can't I just defeat that with one confirmation button and then go back to the regular gauge cluster? It's just little things like that that feel nonsensical like it, it, why wasn't this addressed another thing that i mentioned is the gauge cluster in sort of dawn and dusk time periods it brightens and darkens as the light comes in but when you're in that in between time with dawn and dusk it doesn't do a good job of knowing whether to be yeah bright or dark and so it's constantly going up and down up and down bright and dark bright and dark and that just doesn't feel very premium in your almost $45,000 small crossover. So stuff like that, I just thought was kind of a bummer. I also agree with you that some of the things feel a little chintzy, like the gear selector, I did the same exact thing as you did. I shifted into drive multiple times and it just sort of flopped into manual yeah. mode. Why? That's annoying. You know what I mean? Like, like just stuff like that really frustrated me. Um, I wanted to like it more. Also, as a tall person, I'm almost six and a half feet tall. If you're new to the channel, I fit fine, but I need the steering wheel to come out just a little bit more. It's, it's uh, not as adjustable as I would like. Um, you know, it, it that's the thing. At $44,000, I think it's 44700 you have a lot of options here, but that is multiple thousands more than a fully loaded CRV or RAV4. You're almost up in like RAV4 prime level cost there. And that is a excellent daily driver. Civic Hybrid, Kia Sportage, like these cars are significantly bigger, significantly cushier and provide all of the same level of technology. So it makes you kind of like beg the question, why would you get this over that? Um, so yeah, this is one of the bummers here. This seat is set for me. So this is a six and a half foot tall person. Uh, and not fitting behind a six and a half foot tall person. So in this Dodge Hornet, you have about the same level of interior space as something like the Mazda CX-30, which we've both complained that we love Mazdas. I mean, we, we love a good Mazda on this channel, but we've both complained that the CX-30 feels a little behind because the packaging is too tight in the CX-30. This is 
slightly larger than the CX-30 and as bad or worse in terms of rear seat space for someone who is tall. Now, or are you going to be carrying a bunch of six and a half foot tall people in your Dodge Hornet? No, but even Hornet? for me, it was tight. No, but you couldn't sit behind oh, me. Oh, yeah, because the seat like, was further A child could here. sit behind me. And our family is tall. Both of our girls are like six feet tall or taller. So this is sort of a non-starter for a tall family. And, and so that's just a little bit of a bummer when you consider the price point. If you're looking at this as an entry-level vehicle, well, as an entry-level vehicle purchaser, someone in their 20s or something, going to want to spend almost 45 grand to get all of these options and is someone who can afford a 45 44 45 thousand dollar dodge hornet gonna have enough space in it because they probably have a family and a kid or two or something like that so i think that is sort of the problem with where the dodge hornet is sitting in the marketplace all right so wrapping up our week with the dodge hornet here here's the thing it's very easy to kind of crap on the dodge hornet because it feels like it misses the mark in in so many ways like in every part of this sort of vehicle segment it feels like it's just missing the mark right like there's another vehicle that does it better i don't disagree with that sort of sentiment and i, I share it i think we both do I, I i don't think we have a lot of love for the dodge hornet however <laughs> i don't hate it I no know. that's the thing like i i really don't hate the dodge hornet and to be honest with you i drove it quite often this week we both actually had a fair amount of time in mm -hmm. it and I didn't mind driving the Dodge Hornet. I appreciate the fact, and I remember saying this uh, last year when we had the black one, I appreciate the fact that Dodge is trying to Something engineer different. a little bit of like zest into mm -hmm. this vehicle segment. What I think is the last, the one we had last year was at a much lower price point and it came decently equipped. I wanna say it was like in the mid thirties. I don't know, go watch it maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was like in the mid thirties, right? At that price, I feel like this is a, it's a far, cool, yeah, yeah, it's a far more competitive small SUV because that right, you're in the heart of the segment, you're right in there with the CX-30 and the other kind of subcompacts, and you're also in the kind of heart of the smaller kind of crossover RAV4 CRV range. I feel like that's where the fun, and here's the thing, this engine, this turbo four with 268 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque, that's good for the class. Like that's legitimately good. So I think in that kind of mid thirties price, it's worth giving the Dodge Hornet a look if you want something different. So I don't want your takeaway from this video, especially because we're about to cut to you and you're going to be like average, 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 <laughs> average, which is not wrong. But I don't want your takeaway from this this video to be like the Dodge Hornet's an awful vehicle. It, it's just not. It's not an awful vehicle. It's sharing a platform with the Alfa Romeo Tonali, which means it's got sort of that driver's baked in DNA, right? It's Alfa Romeo. But at almost $45,000, this is a ridiculous proposition. So take that with a grain of salt. I'll kick it over to you and your kind of like average, you know, uh, feelings <laughs> about the Dodge Hornet. But I just wanted to end on a semi-positive note to show that there is promise here in this vehicle. And it's a good effort at a small crossover from a company that's not really known for making crossovers these days. Okay, so overall, the exterior is probably my favorite. Like, I think it looks pretty cool. It looks sporty. I like the way it looks. Um, I'll give it like a 7 out of 10. We didn't so, even uh, introduce the Megan moment oh, here. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching this far. We, if they're this we far, really they're appreciate committed. it. Yeah, we really appreciate it. So now to the Megan masterful moment. Wow, well, masterful that seems moment. that seems too much. That's the a, Megan. Yeah. That's presumptuous. Uh, um, exterior, 7 out of 10. Okay. It's probably my favorite thing. I do think it looks pretty good. They tried to make it sporty. It definitely looks kind of cooler and sportier to me than like a CRV or a RAV4 or whatever. So bravo on that one. Um, the way it drives, 7 out of 10. I mean, I really don't have any likes or dislikes one way or the other. It's just kind of neutral. I'm kind of neutral about it. Um, it drives well. It does what it's supposed to do. The brakes aren't too grabby. They're a little grabby, but not too grabby. Not like where it makes you jerk, you know. Um and the suspension is like fine. It's a little, I could do a little floatier, but it's a little sporty. A little floatier. A little floatier. Space wise, so interior, I'm going to go like a s five and a half out of 10. Oh, okay. I just, there's lots of materials that I don't love. And for the price of this car, which we'll get to that in value, I feel like it should be like a little nicer. Like I do, I do appreciate the sporty vibe that they're going for, but I think we could have done sporty with a little bit nicer. Or lowered the price down a little bit to kind of fit more with what the fa the materials look like to me. Um, and it's pretty tight. It's just not super comfortable. It's pretty tight. So 
If you're looking for a sportier look than the CRV, less space than the CRV or the RAV4, um, did you leave value out? A decent drive. No, I'm not there yet. Oh, okay. Then I think it hits all those kind of things just fine. Value though, this is like what forty four thousand dollars. Forty four. Like that is a lot of money for a pretty small car with not awesome materials. But remember what I said? You can probably find a deal on one. You can probably find a deal on They're one. They're not selling very well. Oh, and if you could find a deal on one, like go for it. But I do think it's a little pricey for what you get. Yeah. So. So value, I'm going to probably go like a five and a half. Yeah, if it was at this price. Yeah. Yes. If you could get a deal on it, that would obviously go yeah, up. But it wouldn't go much beyond seven. No. Um. So overall, I'll probably go like a six and a half. Yeah, you're in that six or seven range. I'm in like a time. six to seven range. It's it's There's nothing wrong with it. It's not my cup of tea, clearly. And I do. it's not enough of the good, good things to like make me be like, oh, maybe I would like that car. Because sometimes I do surprise you where I'm like, Hey, maybe I want to drive this Hyundai Ionic. Yeah, well, <laughs> or you like the um, way it drives, but you don't like the way it looks, like yes, the Ionic 5. Yes, this one I just, I like the way it looks, but I don't love the way it drives. And I know I said that earlier, but I don't like the way the interior looks enough right. to, uh, big on interiors. Yeah, to, to swing me over to that side. So there you go. That's what I think about it. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, ring the bell if that's still a thing we haven't decided yet. Um, we said that probably the past five videos. I know, but you like haven't told me uh, <laughs> yet. Let's just say it's not. Anymore. Okay, just like and subscribe then. We appreciate yeah. you watching. Come see you next time.